Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from a beautiful Menasha, Wisconsin in the United States. Today I am going to be sharing a technique with you that I've used before. The technique is a baby wipe technique, but totally different than what I've ever done. This is brand new to me and I have been having so much fun today. This is part of the Totally Techniques February blog hop. Please make sure when we get to the end of the video, you are going to see a link up here that is going to take you right to my blog. And when you scroll down past the projects I'm making today, there's going to be a place where you can click on some little thumbnails that are going to take you on the blog hop and see what everybody else did with the baby wipe technique. So let's get this camera turned around and we'll get started. The first thing I'm going to do today is show you the products that I'm using. I have got my black and white gingham ribbon here. I've got some of our beautiful adhesive backed sparkle gems, Parakeet Party Azure Afternoon and Daffodil Delight colored ink pads. I've got Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad and also Versamark for a little bit of embossing. We are also going to be using some ink refills and I've got Daffodil Delight Afternoon, or I'm sorry, Azure Afternoon and Parakeet Party. We are going to pull in some baby wipes and I know anytime I do a baby wipe technique, people always ask me what kind of baby wipes do you use? Generally for stamping purposes and even cleaning stamps, if that's what you're doing with baby wipes, the really cheap ones you get at the dollar store aren't always the best. And I'm all about saving money on things like this, but the cheap ones have a lot of lint in them. They leave lint on your stamps. They just don't do as good of a job as we need them to do. I buy Huggies, Natural Care um, is fragrance free. I don't like the really smelly, perfumey baby wipes. So this is what I buy. And Huggies is made by Kimberly Clark, which is a local company. Their world headquarters are right near me. So I've always been a fan of Huggies diapers when the kids were little and also their wipes. Okay, I'm going to go over my cardstock layers a little later because we're going to do the technique first. So I've got some of our Fluid 100, whoops, Fluid 100 watercolor paper. And this is the part that I've never done before with the baby wipe technique is use watercolor paper. And it is a game changer. Like it makes all the difference. I might be using a spritzer. This is one of our Stampin' Spritzers. You get two in a pack when you order these and it's a very fine mist that it sprays out of here. Okay, let's do our technique first. And I'm just gonna show you my little, my little stash here that I have had so much fun playing with today. I have literally been playing with color combinations. So these are used baby wipes. They've been sitting out for quite a while. I'm just going to dispose of them. They're sitting on the silicone mat that comes with the glass mat and a cleaning cloth. Now this is our celebration promotion that ends on the last day of February, 2024. You get the glass mat with the cleaning cloth and the silicone mat. This is all called the Glass Mat Studio. When you join my team, you can be a discount shopper or a business builder. It's completely up to you, but this is one of the selections you can get for free before the end of February for our celebration promotion. So if you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to contact me. You can find my email address on my blog, www.estampabove.com. Here's my current host code. If you'd like to place an order, please use that code. If your order total is under $150, this really helps me out in being able to give away prizes and replenish my stock of supplies. Let's get this party started. Now the glass mat is going to be really instrumental in what we do today. And of course, there's all kinds of different ways you could do what I'm going to do with the ink refills, but it's really, really handy. And I love this thing. Like I have really been having a good time with it. I've enjoyed the stamping surface. I've never stamped on a glass mat before. It's fantastic. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we are going to take our baby wipes. I'm gonna be working with three different colors here. 
So what I'm going to do is grab three baby wipes. I am going to fold them in half, fold them in half again, and then do it one more time. So this is the surface that I'm going to have here. So we're going to fold them in half, fold in half, and fold in half. And because I'm using three colors, I'm going to use three different baby wipes. You could possibly get away with not using three separate, but I'm supporting Kimberly Clark Corporation, and I do like my different um, baby wipes. First things first, I am going to start with my yellow, which is my Daffodil Delight. And we are going to take that and just make a line right on the glass. That's what I love about this thing. I'm gonna pick that up with my baby wipe. You can see that ink right there. Now I'm going to take this and I am going to rub it right across the watercolor paper. And I was really surprised, I wasn't aware that watercolor paper made such a difference, but it is a huge difference. I'm looking for my little scrap here. The difference is huge, so let me do this. You can see that it doesn't really, um, the ink doesn't really go on there nicely. Now this might be a look for something you might wanna do, but it's blended very nicely on the watercolor paper. And again, I had no idea. The thought of using watercolor paper never crossed my mind until one of my team members shared that with me. I'm just gonna wipe that glass mat clean now I'm gonna go with my Azure Afternoon. And again, I'm just putting that right on the glass mat. I'm going to pick up that ink and then we're gonna turn this piece around and I'm gonna come in here and I am going to add it to my layer. And you can see how pretty that's blending. I'm gonna smooth out that edge a little bit. It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, I'm just gonna wipe this up, set that aside. You do get a little dirty with this. Like I said, I've been playing with this all day. So I've got some ink on my fingers, but it's easily removed, so not a big deal. And now I'm gonna use the Parakeet Party, and I'm gonna pick up that ink, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to wipe that right down that middle. Now you can do this way, and you can see where it's kind of turning green on the blue. The one thing you'll notice is my fingerprints, you guys. So you wanna be careful about that. I always forget about that part. I'm gonna come back here with the blue and get that covered back up so I don't have big fingerprints all over. I see I've got a little bit of blue, down, or blue in my yellow. And again, I'm just gonna go over that. Oh my gosh, is this not beautiful? It's just so vibrant and pretty. Lots of different color combinations that I can think of. Now, the reason why I brought in my um, Stampin' Spritzer is because as I was making all these different colors, I would set my baby wipe down, and when I went to use it again, the baby wipe itself is kind of drying. And I thought, well, I wonder, if I added a little bit of water to it, if that would moisten it back up so it would be usable again. I didn't want to like have to use a whole bunch of baby wipes. So I just sprayed that water right on my baby wipe to moisten it. And I was able to continue. Now I can put some more ink on here if I wanted to, but I'm just kind of illustrating that as you make these, they're gonna get lighter and lighter without adding more ink. So that, you know, it's all about what you're looking for. If you want it to be more vibrant, by all means, add some more ink to it. But I'm just gonna do this with the colors that I have here. Oh, that green got really, really light. So I can go back, add a little bit more of the ink refill. There we go. And now I've got a much different look. And of course you can smooth these out. See, I got a little carried away there. I'm gonna come back in here. I've got fingerprints all over because I keep forgetting to keep my fingerprints off my cardstock, my watercolor paper. But that's a whole different look now. I think I'd like a little bit more of a definition in my yellow. So I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow ink. 
and I'm going to come in. There we go. There we go. So totally different look from this one. I just set these all aside and let them dry. So I'm going to move these out of the way. I've been setting them on my silicone mat so they don't get anything else with ink or um, ruin any of my cards because you know what that's like when you have a baby wipe sitting on your table and then you set a card by it. And then I'm just going to come in here and clean off my glass mat. Now for video purposes, I have started using these translucent post-it notes so that you don't get so much glare off of my lighting. But I have to have the light so you can see the video. <laughs> it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Okay, I'm gonna show you some more colors that I've made. Um, I, I'm bringing this in. This one's already dried. I made it a little earlier. So Azure Afternoon Parakeet Party Daffodil Delight. This one I made with Daffodil Delight, Calypso Coral, and Azure Afternoon. This one I made with Berry Burst, Flirty Flamingo, and um, Daffodil Delight. This one was a disaster. I can't remember what color I put down here. I think I started going with the blue and it never worked. But I created this lighter circle in here by grabbing one of my water painters. No, I took a baby wipe. I actually grabbed a baby wipe and wiped off some of the color in the middle. I was going to kind of go for a sun look and then I ruined it. And so I just kind of gave up on that. But you can see all the options here are so fun. So I thank Anne, my team member, for sharing this with me. One thing I did want to do, I've got a little three-quarter inch strip here, and I want to make a piece to match the inside of my card. I'm going to put this one on the inside, and so I'm just going to give this some color. I need a little bit more green there. Hang on. Fold that over, pick up that green. There we go. And I think I would like just a little bit more blue on there. We're gonna actually use this little strip to decorate the inside of our card. That may be a little too much. But as you can see, every single one of these that you make is going to be different. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Let me grab my cleaning cloth. And this will clean up the whole thing. This comes with the Glass Mat Studio. It's super handy. I keep it in a clear case. Okay, so all these different examples. We are going to work with this one, and then I have another sample to show you using some other colors. Um, back with our card. Let's get our card back in here. We'll set those aside. I've got a Parakeet Party card base, four and a quarter by 11. I've already scored it at five and a half. I've also got a piece of, ooh, this looks too big, hang on. It's not too big, it's just the right size. It is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And this layer, which was three quarters by five, is gonna fit right on there, so we can add that. I'm using multi-purpose liquid glue. This is my favorite adhesive. I like the fact that the glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room before it sets up and you can't move your layer anymore. If you need to move it, you, um, you can do it now and you don't have to tear it apart. But look at that stunning pop of black really makes, the black really makes this pop. I'm going to bring in my bundle that I'm using. This is the Hot Air Balloon Bundle, which I absolutely love. So many options here. It's got some birthday sentiments in it, and then it's got some sentiments that say, hang in there, just a note to lift you up. And that's what I'm gonna be using today. Okay, we're gonna use our scraps here. I'm going to die cut this heart. We're gonna have a heart-shaped balloon. Also the basket with the um, ropes on it. We're gonna do one big cloud and two little ones on basic white. This is basic black. And I'm going to get those all die cut. I'll be right back. Here comes all our bits and pieces. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put these together. I'm gonna add dimensionals to the back of one of the small, whoops, one of the small clouds. I've got black dimensionals here and white dimensionals. So we'll put white on the back of the white clouds. And I wanna make sure these are nice and stable. So I'm gonna trim up just a little piece of a dimensional to add over here to the side. I don't wanna see it sticking out in the front. And another one right here. And I think I can, I didn't put it so goofy. Oh, I've actually got two large clouds and one small. Well, that'll be okay. All right, then on the back of my heart, I've got some black dimensionals here. And I'm just using them because I'm using black cardstock. And I'll put a little mini one down here. We're going to put some glue right on this tiny little edge of this layer and I am going to add that right in here. I'm just going to give it a second to set up. I see I got a little bit of glue overrun there which I always despise. We'll wipe that off right away. So this is what our balloon looks like. My idea with this is that it's going to be a silhouette. Like I'm, I'm going for a silhouette idea here. So my take your pick tool, pop those backings off. Before I add these, I need to remember to put on my ribbon. I've got this fun black and white ribbon that I thought would really pop on here also. So I'm gonna add a bit of it over here to the edge. And I like to do my ribbon like this rather than wrapping it all the way around and having to tie it in a double knot or try to tie a bow on the front and get it to lay down the way I want it to. This is just much easier for me. It takes away, whoops, a lot of that frustration of trying to get everything perfect, right? Here comes my bow jig. Now this little thing is a handy little tool. I absolutely love it. It's nothing more than a piece of wood with some holes in it. And this ties the most perfect bows every single time in various sizes. If you're in the US, you can get one of these from me. I don't make any money on them. I just charge what I have to pay for them to have them made and the shipping. But they're $10. If you would like one, just pop me an email and um, I will invoice you through PayPal. If you're outside the US, make one. Holes drilled in a piece of wood with nails. Pretty simple. Grabbing my mini glue dots here and I'm going to curl up a mini glue dot and I'm going to put it right up here on my ribbon. Let's see if I can get it to stick there. There we go. I'm going to manipulate this bow a little bit. and I'm going to pop that right on that glue dot. There we go. Now, if your bow won't stay in place where you want it to, you could add some mini glue dots underneath the tails to make them lay down. That's definitely an option. Next, we're going to take one of our clouds and I'm gonna add some glue to one and I'm gonna put it right up here then I'm gonna bring in the one on dimensionals and kind of offset it over here a little bit. Actually, I do not want that one there. This is the other large one. I wanted to do too small and a large, but like I said, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna put this one over the large, kind of overlapping a little bit. I just think that looks nice. And then we'll put this one over here. Okay. Now we can bring in our balloon. And I'm gonna add that right about here. Oh my gosh, isn't this starting to come together, you guys? The other thing that I wanna do, I've got a black scrap here. I've got my white embossing powder that comes in the basics embossing powders and also my embossing additions toolkit, which is fabulous. We're gonna do a little bit of embossing. So I'm wiping down my cardstock with the embossing buddy. We're gonna stamp with that Versamark ink. 
and I've got hang in there. And when I do embossing like this, I figure I'm probably gonna use this white embossing on black more than just for this card. So I like to make lots of them. So the next time I'm stamping, I'll put this in the case with the stamp set, these embossed pieces, and I won't have to emboss again. I just, I always like to be really efficient like that. We are going to add the powder, tap this off. I see I missed a little bit of an H right there. And I usually like to flick this a little bit. Now we've got all of these here. We can heat emboss them and we're gonna have a whole bunch of embossed words to use whenever we need them. I'm gonna heat set this quick. I've got my pliers or my tweezers here that come with the embossing additions toolkit that's going to hold everything in place. And I'll be right back. And there we go. What I did with my sentiment is I took and cut one of these out. And I'm cutting pretty close, just a straight line underneath a straight line on the top. And I'm gonna to take one of these. These others I'm gonna put in that stamp set. So I have them. And I'm gonna cut pretty close because these words are pretty tight together. Then we're just gonna cut in between. Don't lose them. We've got these mini dimensionals that have a very wide border. And I like to use these for small things like this. So I'm just gonna cut some slices off the edge there. And I like to use my take your pick tool. If you don't have one of these, oh my gosh, it is my favorite tool. Like it's an extension of my arm. Highly recommend them. They can be found in my Stampin' Up! store. They are the bomb and they come with all kinds of little accessories. This putty end is refillable. This comes out, you have different tools that come with it. It is the bomb. Now I've taken one of those little strips and cut it small so that it'll fit on the back of my word in. And here we go. Remove the backing on those. And you can see I use my take your pick tool for that also. My fingernails are thicker and it makes it hard for me to get these backings off of the dimensionals. Okay, I also like to use it to pick these little pieces up. So I've got a little hang. Hang on, I got a little bit of embossing powder on here. In. And I'm not making these straight on purpose because putting them all evenly and straight is stressful. So I did that on purpose. Isn't this so pretty, you guys? I'm gonna get that little dimensional out of there. Now we're gonna pop this on here. You could use, of course, Azure Afternoon for your base, whatever color you'd like. The Azure Afternoon would probably have popped a lot more. I didn't think of that. Now we're gonna get out a layer for our inside. And I always, always like to um, decorate my inside. So I'm gonna bring out the Hot Air Balloon stamp set. I'm using the Azure Afternoon ink. I'm gonna stamp that right over here. I'm also going to stamp it on my envelope. This is a medium sized basic white envelope. Ooh, I didn't leave room for the basket down here. So don't worry. That's why we have two sides to every piece of cardstock. Go just like that so we have some room. And then I think I'll bring in that parakeet party. And I've got this fun little image. Now, my friend Barb taught me that when you have solid stamps like this, you should take and put a piece of tape on them just to remove any lint that may be stuck to them because you know that doesn't give you a really good image when you stamp and there's lint on your stamp. So that's a super good tip. My friend Barb is pretty smart. Okay, 
Okay, here we go. We're gonna add that parakeet party right to the middle. Isn't that so pretty? And then I've got my basket. I think I'll make that out of parakeet party too. Hang on, I gotta get this lined up. Let me make sure it's inked up good. Ah, absolutely fabulous. We're gonna do the same thing to the outside of our envelope. I firmly believe that we have all the tools to make everything pretty and that we should definitely take advantage of that. No naked envelopes, no naked insides of cards. When somebody opens up their mailbox, they're gonna know that, whoops, they're getting something really pretty from you and they're gonna be excited before they even get a chance to open it. Oh, that was a good save, wasn't it? Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is put an inside sentiment in my card with the memento black. This is the inside here. And this says a note to lift you up. And I'm gonna put my little sentiment right down here. And then I have lots of room to write to whomever I am going to send this to. I have one of my customers that just lost a cat. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for her. She's crushed. This would be a great card to send her to let her know that I'm thinking about her. And of course, to offer my condolences. I think I'm gonna have to get a new bottle of glue out. Super, super cute. Last but not least, let's get some embellishments on here. I thought these sparkle gems would be the perfect embellishment. We have black, copper, silver, white, and I love all of them. <laughs> I'm gonna do maybe one right there. I'll grab a little one and put it maybe right over here. And then we'll do another bigger one right up there. Okay, what do you guys think? Isn't this cute? Oh, you know what? I forgot that I was gonna put this on the inside. My idea was to put it over here. And then I wouldn't have stamped the balloon and I would have stamped my sentiment up here. But definitely you can do that. Completely forgot. I got so excited about that balloon. Here is our my hang in there baby wipe technique. And of course I said I had another one. Here is the Daffodil Delight Flirty Flamingo and Berry Burst with the matching envelope. I hope you guys will give this technique a try. Watercolor paper is a game changer and you saw the difference that it made. This will get pilly and I can feel it. This gets pilly from the liquid in the baby wipes and this just blends so beautifully. I really love it. Watercolor, this is our watercolor paper called Fluid 100. And you can find that, of course, in my online store at www.estampabove.com. If you are new to stamping, new to Stampin' Up!, new to me, and you would like to get your hands on our current catalogs, please don't hesitate. Pop me an email with your address, kelly at estampabove.com, and I will be happy to send you the catalogs. Click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out, and please click up here. That's going to take you right to my blog where you can find my online store and follow along in this blog hop with the baby wipe techniques. You're going to love it. Thank you guys so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye-bye.